Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you do. We're very, very grateful. So thank you. I hope you're doing all right. I may stay blessed. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today we're reacting to Salman, Salman of Farsi. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Hey, I was the son of someone who was called Dihqan. He was the richest person in my city, in my town, and he was the main merchant, and he had some religious duties or some religious role and position. And he loved me so much that he didn't even let me go and mix with people. He kept me at home because he was so worried that something bad might happen to me. So he wanted to protect me from everybody and from every harm. So he kept me at home. He was very deeply involved in what his family was involved in. They were the leaders of the fire worshippers and those who worship the sun. Then they were known as Al Majus. So he used to be in charge as a young boy of keeping the flame alive. So he would bring for it fuel all the time and people worship the flame. And he used to tell himself, you know, I keep the flame alive. I bring the logs, I bring everything. And then people are worshiping the same fire. And it's me who's in charge. A young boy, he was very young. So his father used to keep him in the home and within the vicinity, never allowed him to go anywhere. And he never ever interacted and mixed with people. He says, one day my father was very busy. So he said to me, listen, in one of my gardens, there is some work I need to do and I can't do it. So I'm going to send you to do this work and don't go anywhere else. Only go to that garden, do the work that I ask you to do and don't go to any other place and come back. Because if you do that, I will be consumed by worry. So he said, I went to that garden of my father's and on the way I heard some people a nice voice of some people reciting something so I went there and it was a church these people were Christians seems that they were upon the right and the correct and authentic message of Jesus peace be upon him so he liked the hymns and the recitation that they were doing so he joined them and he stayed with them for the whole day then I went back to my father without going to his garden. I found out that my father had spent the whole day looking for me and he was consumed by worry and fear and apprehension about me. My father said to me, where did you go? He said, well, actually I was going to the garden, but I saw some people on the way. They were reciting some nice things. When I went to join them, they were worshipping God. And I liked the religion they were upon and I stayed with them for the whole day. So my father said to me, now those people are evil, their religion is evil, your religion is better than them. I said, no, their religion is better than our religion. It's clear because worshipping the fire, it's obviously to any person with a sound intellect, it totally contradicts every reason and every intellect. His father, when he noticed that, he chained him and he imprisoned him, he jailed him at home. He said, you can't go out. He said, through some of my contacts, I sent to those Christians and I asked them, where is the origin of this religion? So they said to him, they are based in a sham. So I said to them, when a caravan comes to you from that land, from Syria, please inform me. Time passed by. One day a caravan came from a sham. He said, please, when the day comes, the day of, of their departure comes, please inform me. Somebody informed him. He broke loose from the chains and he joined them and he went to, with them to Asham, to one of the churches there. And there was a priest in charge of that church. He stayed with them and he said, listen, I came from that land and I left the religion of my fathers and my forefathers. And because I see that your religion is the truth, I want to follow it. It's the religion of God. So he joined them. But he said, I saw that this priest was an evil man. He pretends to be righteous, but every time he tells the people, pay for the poor people, pay for the cause of the religion. 
The people would pay from their gold and their silver and the wealth that they had, but he didn't give the money to the poor people. He kept it for himself. He used to hoard it somewhere. He used to save it somewhere. And I hated him so much, but I couldn't say anything about him. And one day, he became very ill and he died. So everybody was getting ready to bury him and give him a respected funeral. So I said to them, why do you want to give him such a respectable funeral? They said he's our leader and our priest. He said, but he was an evil man. They said, how do you know that? He said, because I lived with him. And every time he commanded you to give charity, he would take it for himself and hoard it and save it somewhere. They said, can you prove it? He said, yes, I can tell you where he kept all the money and all the wealth. He told them where that place was. And they found a lot of wealth, a lot of silver and gold. He kept it for himself. Then they brought another priest to be in charge of the church. This new priest was such a righteous person. I've never seen anyone like him in my life. He was a devout believer. Worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And he would guide the people, teach them, and he would do so many deeds of righteousness. I loved him so much like I've never loved any person in my life. And I lived with him and I started learning from him. And one day he fell ill and he was about to die. So I told him, I left my father and my family and my country in search for the religion of truth. And I've lived with you. Now you are dying. You know, tell me about a person that I can, I can go and join him and live with him and learn from him. He said, oh my son, you know, people have changed the religion of truth, the religion that Jesus came with. And I only know of a person who was Nal Musil. That person is upon the true religion. So go and join him and stay with him. Once he, we, he died and we buried him, I left to Al Musil and I joined that person and I found him to be even better than his friend. More righteous than his friend. And I spent a long time with him, learning from him, serving him, and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, it was such a wonderful time for me. But then time came where this person also fell ill. So he said to, this, to his teacher who was dying, he said to him, guide me to someone. He said, you know son, people have changed the religion. And I only know of one person who is in a city called Nuslibin. So you join him and you learn from him. So he said, I stayed for some time after we buried him. Then I straight set out to Nuslibin to join that person. And I found him even better than his friends. More righteous. I spent more time with him and I learned from him. And I loved him so much, more than I loved anybody before. Then he fell ill and he was about to die. When he was on his deathbed, I came to him and I said, I've left my family. What should I do? Where should I go? I need a sheikh. So he said to him, people have changed the religion. I only know that on earth there is only one person that I know of who is still on the true religion of monotheism, the religion that Isa alayhi salam came with. She said, where is he? He said, in Amuriya. So he said, this person died. Then I traveled to Amuriya and stayed with that person. I found him to be more righteous than all the ones before. And I loved him so much and stayed with him for some time. Then after a while, he became very ill. And I could tell that he was dying. So I said to him, show me, guide me to anyone that I can go and join, I want to learn from and I want to stay with. He said to him, I don't know of any person on earth who is still on the true religion. But he gave him a good piece of news. Now it's time for a prophet to be sent with this truth. And he will be set in a land between two hills. And this land or this city will be full with palm trees. Then he died. She said, I stayed in that city, Amuriya, for some time. I worked and I managed to buy a cow and some sheep, some goats, waiting for the opportunity and asking and inquiring to know what is that city, where is it? 
So I came to know that it seems that it was the land Arabia. One day, there was a trade caravan from a tribe called Kalb, one of the Arab tribes. So I came to them and I said to them, can you take me to your land, to Arabia, and I will give you my cow and my goats? They said, okay. And we set out on the journey. On the way, they set me up. They sold him as a slave. Who bought him? He was bought by a Jew, so he became a slave to one of the Jews. He said, when that Jewish person took me to his home, to his town, I saw many palm trees around. So I was hoping that this was the land of the Prophet. Imagine, he was taken as a slave. But still, his main concern was to find the Prophet, or the, that city where the Prophet was to be sent. That was the main thought on his mind. He didn't think about him being set up and being, becoming a slave, losing his liberty, losing his self. He said, I really felt some happiness that this might be the city where this Prophet will migrate to. He said, but I stayed with the, my master for some time. Then one of his cousins came from a city called Yathrib. And my master sold me to his cousin. And who was this cousin? The cousin was from Banu Quraidah. They had settled around Medina. So Salman, he decided, okay, I'm going with this new master of mine. Let me go. When he got to Banu Quraidah, he noticed the desert. He noticed the rocks. He saw the greenery, the orchards, and he was so excited. There are so many events that shape our life in this world. For this guy, his own father imprisoned him because... Um, he believed in one God while the father believed in some sort of fire God. He also suffered other things such as the death of all these people he was seeking. So he was getting knowledge from one person to the other person and he was just losing people that came into his life time and time after again. But this is the person showing strength by not saying, you know what, the world is maybe trash or something. But he kept on going and going to find more information and the fact that he still was happy after being tricked and sold into a slave by the people he made a deal with and that's real strength 